Hey everyone, Phil here and welcome back to the channel. Now without further ado, let's just dive into this mystery and if you do enjoy the video, please make sure to give it a like. The Pisco Valley, nestled amidst the sprawling landscapes of Peru, is a tranquil place where golden hues of the setting sun bathe the lands and the skies above are a vast expanse of azure beauty. Yet, beneath this calm facade lies an enigma one that has puzzled generations, the Band of Holes. This curious formation consists of thousands of man-made pits stretching over a mile, each dug with precision, appearing as though they were etched by the hands of giants. Some holes are shallow, others seem to delve deep into the Earth's belly. Arranged in neat rows and patterns, their origin and purpose remain unknown. Locals, when asked, would offer hesitant smiles and stories passed down from their ancestors. They'd speak of rituals, of starlit dances, and of voices that once echoed through the valley. Yet, as the sun descended, casting elongated shadows that danced across the holes, the winds carried with them a hint of mystery. Each gust seemed to whisper tales of ancient civilizations, of rituals forgotten by time, and secrets that the earth clutched close to its chest. For Professor Elena Vasquez, these whispers were an irresistible siren song, and as dusk approached, she found herself standing at the edge of the band of holes, feeling the weight of centuries under her feet, ready to embark on a journey into the unknown. At the heart of Lima's bustling streets and its teeming academia, Professor Elena Vasquez was a name held in reverence. With raven black hair, piercing hazel eyes, and a demeanor that radiated both warmth and authority. She had long been the leading voice in Peruvian archaeology. Her office at the Universidad de Lima was an archive of her expeditions, ancient pottery shards, faded manuscripts, and photographs of mysterious dig sites. For decades, she'd unraveled the stories of civilizations that once thrived on this land, giving voice to the voiceless past. Yet, among her numerous accolades and discoveries, there remained a void, an unsolved puzzle that tugged at her very soul, the band of holes. The few times she had broached the topic with her colleagues, they dismissed it as a mere agricultural phenomenon, possibly granaries or water storage. But Elena believed otherwise. The precision, the vastness, and the alignment of the holes hinted at something far more significant. Relying on fragmented local legends, she'd heard tales of a celestial calendar, of ritualistic dances, and of portals to another world. Some spoke of the holes being a tribute to the gods, while others whispered about them being places of punishment. One evening, as rain gently tapped against her windowpane, she unfurled an old map of the Pisco Valley. With a deep breath, she circled the band of holes. This was to be her next great venture. Enlisting a team of young archaeologists and local guides, she decided to delve into this enigma, not as a mere observer, but as a passionate seeker of truths that had long eluded the world. The morning sun, radiant and full of promise, cast a golden sheen over the Pisco Valley as Elena and her team began their exploration. Armed with tools, notebooks, and an insatiable curiosity, they approached the first hole with bated breath. Upon closer inspection, it was evident that this wasn't a mere indentation in the ground. The edges, though eroded with time, showed signs of deliberate crafting, of hands that worked with purpose and precision. Elena, kneeling beside one, ran her fingers over its surface, feeling the cold, ancient earth beneath. Hours turned into days as the team meticulously cataloged each hole noting their depths, diameters, and patterns. But it was on the fourth day when young archaeologist Marco, with his keen eyes, made a startling discovery. Beneath the debris and centuries-old soil in one of the deeper holes, he found an opening, a passage. This was no mere pit, it was an entrance. With lanterns held high, the team cautiously descended into the abyss. The narrow, winding tunnel was more than just a passage, it was a labyrinth, an intricate network that spread in all directions. As they ventured deeper, 
The air grew thick with the scent of damp earth and ancient secrets. The walls of the tunnel were not just bare rock. They bore imprints of tools, faint traces of pigments, and, most intriguingly, symbols and glyphs that seemed to narrate tales lost to the sands of time. It became increasingly evident that the band of holes was not just a series of pits on the surface. It was a gateway, an invitation to a world below that held the key to its very existence. The team had barely scratched the surface of this enigma, and as the shadows of the labyrinth enveloped them, they realized they were on the precipice of a discovery that could redefine history. The walls of the underground maze were akin to pages of an old, dusty book. As the team navigated the narrow corridors, the lantern's flickering light illuminated stories etched in stone, scenes of daily life, of rituals, and of celestial beings dancing amidst the stars adorned the walls. Elena, with her practiced eye, was quick to note the distinct style of the artwork, unlike any she had seen from known Peruvian civilizations. Beside a depiction of a grand procession, Elena found inscriptions in a script unfamiliar to her. These characters, curved and flowing, seemed to dance on the stone, exuding an energy of their own. She carefully made rubbings of the inscriptions, hoping to decode their messages later. Amid the explorations, Diego, a linguist on the team, pointed out a recurring symbol, a spiral with seven points radiating from its center. This emblem was painted with a pigment that shimmered in the lantern's light, giving it an otherworldly glow. It appeared throughout the labyrinth, sometimes surrounded by figures in prayer, at other times by those in apparent celebration. In a chamber deep within the labyrinth, they stumbled upon a mural that took their breath away. A vast landscape of the Pisco Valley was depicted, with the band of holes prominently featured. Around it, the people of this ancient civilization seemed to gather, some bringing offerings, others dancing, and yet others looking skyward, as if expecting a celestial event. Beneath the mural was a stone pedestal with a recessed groove, seemingly designed to hold something of importance, though it was now empty. Elena theorized it might have held a sacred object, central to the ceremonies related to the Band of Holes. The depth and intricacy of the artistry made one thing clear. The Band of Holes wasn't a mere agricultural or functional endeavor. It was sacred, deeply intertwined with the beliefs and rituals of its creators. As the team retraced their steps back to the surface, they felt the weight of the stories around them, echoing through millennia, yearning to be heard once more. As days melded into nights, the encampment around the Band of Holes buzzed with activity. Tents were strewn with artifacts, scribbled notes, and the hum of hushed discussions. The team worked tirelessly, piecing together the fragments of information they had uncovered from the labyrinth. In a secluded corner, under a canopy draped with gauzy fabrics, Elena and her closest confidants pored over the rubbings taken from the inscriptions. The recurring symbol, the radiant spiral, seemed to hold particular significance. Beside her, Diego, with his vast knowledge of ancient languages, began to make tentative translations. Words like celestial, harmony, and convergence appeared frequently. In another tent, Maria, the team's cultural anthropologist, had set up a mini laboratory. She had been examining the ash remnants from the smaller holes around the main altar found deep within the tunnels. Her analysis revealed traces of various botanicals, suggesting that these holes had been used for burning specific offerings, releasing their fragrant smoke during ceremonies. One evening, as the sky was painted with hues of orange and crimson, the team gathered around a campfire, with Elena taking the center stage. She painted a vivid picture. On specific nights, under the watchful eyes of constellations, ceremonies took place. The radiant spiral symbol possibly represented a cosmic event, a convergence of planetary bodies, or maybe even a celestial phenomenon unknown to modern astronomy. The people of this ancient civilization, dressed in ceremonial robes, would gather around the band of holes. Ritualistic dances were performed, offerings burned, and at the climax of the ceremony, as the smoke spiraled upwards, 
a select few would descend into the labyrinth, perhaps to communicate with the deities, seeking blessings, guidance, or presenting offerings in the subterranean chambers. The air grew chill as Elena spoke, her voice weaving a tapestry of mysticism and history. The crackling fire cast flickering shadows that danced and intertwined, much like the spirits of the past, evoking a time when the boundary between the earthly realm and the cosmos was but a thin veil, and the band of holes served as the bridge between the two. A week into their excavation, the bustling activity around the band of holes drew the attention of the nearby villages. Locals, curious yet wary, would often stand at a distance, watching the outsiders probe into their ancestral lands. Among them was Raoul, an elderly man with skin weathered by time and eyes that held a depth of knowledge passed down through generations. One misty morning, as the fog hung low over the valley, Raoul approached the campsite. Clad in traditional Andean attire, with a woven poncho draped over his shoulders and a chulo hat adorning his head, he moved with a quiet dignity that commanded respect. The murmurs and activity stilled as he made his way directly to Elena. With a voice like the distant rumble of thunder, he introduced himself as the guardian of ancient tales, a keeper of traditions and stories of the Pisco Valley. He spoke of spirits, not just of the dead, but of the land, the wind, and the very stones of the band of holes. These spirits, he said, were known as the custodios, the guardians who watched over the sanctity of the sacred grounds. The band of holes, Raoul began, his voice taking on a somber tone, is not just a relic of the past. It is a living testament to the pact made between our ancestors and the cosmos. Disturb its sanctity, and the balance of energies may waver. Elena, respectful yet skeptical, inquired about the nature of this pact. Raoul hesitated, his gaze drifting to the distant hills. It is a tale of harmony, of offerings, and of consequences. Many have come before you, driven by curiosity, and they too have stirred the spirits. Some have left unscathed, while others... He trailed off, leaving the sentence hanging ominously. Raoul's visit was brief, but his words left an indelible mark. That night, the camp was awash with whispers. While some dismissed his warning as mere superstition, others felt a prickle of unease. Elena lay in her tent, the weight of responsibility pressing down on her. As the winds howled outside, she wondered if they carried with them the murmurs of the custodios, watching, waiting, and assessing the intentions of those who dared to uncover the secrets of the band of holes. The team's nightly meetings, which were once a symphony of animated discussions and shared findings, now held an undertone of tension. Raoul's forewarning resonated differently with everyone. Yet, amidst the whispered concerns and speculations, there was a fervent desire to understand the mysteries of the ancient civilization that once thrived in the Pisco Valley. Sensing the unease, Elena decided to invite an old acquaintance, Dr. Santiago Alvarez, an esteemed astro-archaeologist. Santiago, with his silver mane and keen eyes that sparkled with youthful curiosity, had dedicated his life to studying the celestial beliefs of ancient cultures. As Santiago set up his advanced telescopic equipment near the band of holes, he was visibly excited. You know, he said, Many ancient civilizations believed in the power of celestial alignments, viewing them as omens or conduits of cosmic energy. Night after night, Santiago, with Elena and the team by his side, delved into the heavens. They mapped out constellations, tracked planetary movements, and attempted to align them with the designs and symbols from the underground labyrinth. The breakthrough came one clear night, when the vast Milky Way stretched overhead like a river of stars. Santiago pointed out a unique celestial pattern, remarkably similar to the radiant spiral symbol. It seemed to represent a rare planetary convergence, one that occurred only once every several centuries. Cross-referencing this with the other findings, a theory began to take shape. Perhaps the band of holes was more than just a ceremonial site. It could be a grand celestial observatory, or a complex calendar, 
marking this rare cosmic event. The ceremonies, the dances, the offerings, they might have all been part of a grander design, a ritual to harness or appease the energies of this celestial alignment. As dawn approached, the horizon painted in hues of pink and gold, the team felt a collective sense of awe. They weren't just unearthing ancient stones and tunnels, they were peeling back the layers of time, tapping into the cosmic beliefs of a people long gone. Yet, as the first rays of the sun touched the band of holes, Elena couldn't shake off Raoul's words. In seeking answers from the stars, were they meddling with energies beyond their understanding? The Peruvian landscape is an orchestra of nature's sounds. The rustle of the grass, the distant call of birds, and the gentle whispers of the Andean winds form a harmonious symphony. However, as days passed following the celestial discovery, these sounds began to change around the band of holes. The winds, in particular, carried with them an eerie undertone, as if murmuring tales from ages past. It was Lila, a sound technician in Elena's team with a penchant for ancient folk songs, who first noticed the anomaly. While capturing the ambient sounds of the valley for documentation, she discerned faint, melodic hums overlaying the gusts of wind. In Triguid, she decided to investigate further. Using specialized equipment, Lila isolated and amplified the hums. To her astonishment, the sounds began to coalesce into a rhythmic pattern, almost like a chant. The haunting melody seemed ancient, echoing the very essence of the valley. Sharing her findings with the team, she played the magnified recording around the campfire one evening. As the sonorous chants enveloped the camp, a profound silence descended. The song, though unfamiliar in its language, conveyed emotions of reverence, longing, and a subtle warning. Diego, recalling his earlier linguistic discoveries from the inscriptions, recognized snippets of the chant's dialect. Piecing together fragments, he translated parts of the song, Guardians of the Earth and Sky, Watch Over the Sacred Ties, When Stars Align and Shadows Cast, Beware the Future, Honor the Past. The implications were unmistakable. The band of holes, the celestial event, the underground chambers, all seemed to be interconnected in a web of rituals and beliefs, perhaps serving as a protective mechanism for the valley and its people. Elena felt a shiver run down her spine. Were the winds truly carrying the voices of the ancient custodios? Was this their way of communicating with the present, a melodic reminder of the sanctity of the land and the rituals bound to it. As the last notes of the chant faded into the night, the weight of their discovery and the responsibility it entailed weighed heavily on the team's collective conscience. Time seemed to fold in on itself as the days progressed. The valley, with its ancient mysteries and resonating chants, seemed to exist in a dimension that was both of the present and of a distant past. The team's discoveries from the celestial alignments to the haunting melodies, suggested that an important date was approaching, a date marked by the rare planetary convergence they had identified. Calculations and celestial predictions indicated that this significant cosmic event would coincide with the upcoming winter solstice, a time already laden with significance in many ancient cultures. The solstice, marking the shortest day and the longest night of the year, represented a dance between darkness and light, death and rebirth. With the added rarity of the planetary alignment, its importance in the context of the band of holes became undeniable. Elena and the team felt an increasing urgency to comprehend the rituals and ceremonies that might have taken place during such an occasion. Deep within the labyrinth, they discovered an alcove they had previously overlooked. Here, Surrounded by intricate carvings of celestial bodies, they found ceremonial tools, herbs, and remnants of what appeared to be ritualistic attire, feathered headdresses, beaded adornments, and woven sashes dyed in vibrant colors. In one of the team's tents, Dr. Gabriela Mendoza, an ethnobotanist, carefully examined the herbs. They were a mix of native plants, some with hallucinogenic properties, 
suggesting their use in shamanistic rituals to induce visions or connect with the divine. Realizing the significance of their findings and the impending solstice, Elena proposed a daring idea to recreate the ancient ceremony. By following the clues left behind and immersing themselves in the ritual, they hoped to gain deeper insights into the beliefs and practices of the people who once revered the Band of Holes. Preparations began in earnest. Using the artifacts as references, the team crafted replicas of the ceremonial attire. Santiago plotted the exact time of the planetary alignment, and Lila, with her keen ear, started practicing the ancient chant, hoping to invoke its essence during the ceremony. As the solstice dawned, the Pisco Valley was blanketed in a mystical haze. The team, dressed in their ritualistic garb, gathered around the band of holes. As the first chant echoed across the valley, and the stars began their rare dance in the sky, an electric energy pulsed through the air. The boundary between the past and the present seemed to blur, as if, for a brief moment, the ancient spirits were once again alive, dancing in the solstice's embrace. The valley, illuminated by the soft glow of the solstice moon, seemed to come alive. Every rock, every gust of wind, every shadow resonated with the pulsating energy of the ritual. As Lila's chant grew in intensity, the team, each member immersed in their role, moved in synchronized patterns around the band of holes. The atmosphere was thick with anticipation, reverence, and an inexplicable connection to a world long past. Suddenly, Elena, standing near the central hole, felt the ground beneath her vibrate gently. The sensation grew stronger, resonating in rhythm with the chant, the dance, and the very heartbeat of the valley. In her heightened state of awareness, she envisioned a vivid tableau, ancient inhabitants of the valley, adorned in ceremonial attire similar to theirs, moving in harmonious unity, their voices raised in a song of celebration, gratitude, and supplication. Beside her, Santiago, his eyes fixed on the heavens, whispered in awe as the rare celestial alignment they had anticipated began to manifest. Stars and planets converged in a radiant dance, casting ethereal lights and shadows upon the earth. It was a sight few had witnessed, a cosmic ballet that seemed to validate every theory, every discovery they had made. As the celestial alignment reached its zenith, a beam of silvery light descended, focusing directly onto the central hole of the labyrinth. The illumination revealed intricate carvings at its base, previously hidden from view. They depicted scenes of communion between the people, the land, and the cosmos, along with symbols and scripts that promised to unlock further secrets of the band of holes. When dawn's first light touched the horizon, painting the sky with hues of lavender and gold, the ritual concluded. Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope that you did enjoy the video. Let me know in the comment section if you heard about this story before. And now we'll say, have a good evening, and I will see you in the next mystery. Peace.